Mom, I'm going to go out and pick up a couple of Aerilix. No Diane Bish for one week. After my grounding was over one week later, I finally showed my mom that I wasn't trying to pick up some dirty women. I was going to pick up a couple of Aurelic speakers, but I said Aerilic because one of the things that bothers me so much with companies today, especially small companies, is unless you have a $100 million marketing campaign to explain how to say your name, I don't know how to say your name. I said Aerilic. My mom thought it was a dirty, dirty, dirty thing to say, so I got grounded. And one week without Diane Bish is like one week without water for most people, so this was really difficult. So, the Aerilic, oh no, Aerilic, BK651s, very expensive speakers from a company that promotes very cheap amps, $700 on their website. Are they worth it? Let's find out. Okay, according to Aurelic, these are a two-way, four-ohm, six-and-a-half-inch woofer with a tweeter that is a Captain Ribbon diaphragm. Recommended power is 50 to 100 watts and sensitivity is 86 dB at 2 volts, 1 meter. What gives me concern is this picture. Because the frequency length of high frequencies is so small, you normally see tweeters and super tweeter sitting outside the box. Here, we've got it in set, which makes me concerned with diffraction. So we're gonna take a look at some of those actual results in our room to see what the diffraction of this tweeter is, how well this woofer can go down low, and what the overall response is of these speakers. Before any hi-fi equipment can be considered high-end, it has to pass the wine test. So how well does this speaker look next to a Lobo El Faqueo reserve from 2020 from Portugal? Well, as we can see, it might look a lot better next to a box of Franzia Chardonnay that can handle 34 glasses. Okay, so it fails our wine test. In fact, um, the BK651 is uh, just a box. Not the prettiest box, not something you want to show off to people. So... As they say sometimes, it's best to keep the, uh, the grill on. Looks a lot better just like that. So I would recommend you, if you want people to look at these things, uh, keep the veil on. It's uh, not that pretty. But does that tweeter and that design screw up the sound? We took near field and far field settings, and this is what they look like. Hey, these near field measurements are ugly and I'll be honest with you I was not expecting much when I got into the listening test because near field looked like there was some serious diffraction on the high end and also looked like the mid-range was just so overly boosted that there was nothing left except for mid-range and uh, then a little peak at the high end after you get past about 8 kilohertz so then I tested something far field. And when I put them in stereo pair, two meters away, I got this response when I measured them. And I have to say, much better. The far field tests look much nicer than the near field tests. There's a lot more filling in of the gaps, but there's still a lot of variation in these speakers. And when I got to my listening tests, this is pretty much what I found. They are rocking speakers and what i mean by that is if you're having a party these can play loud they sound great for a little bit because you're not fully focused on critical listening you spend 600 hours with these speakers and they will definitely sound like um college speakers i would put them as they are capable of playing very loud i was very impressed with that in fact let's take a quick look at the distortion measurements. So where I was very pleasantly surprised with these speakers was how low the distortion was. At 85 dB in stereo mode, not a single speaker, uh, so you probably add 3 dB 
to the um, fact that it's stereo mode, not single speaker. So figure this would be 82 dB um, from a single speaker. The distortion was so low, and if you're handing this to a subwoofer for the low end, you pretty much have no distortion. At 95 dB, very loud, in your listening room, I was also impressed with how low the distortion was. So EQing these, if you have the ability, uh, especially with a good quality parametric EQ, you could probably get these to sound uh, close to what you want, except for that diffraction issue. There's no way you're going to EQ every single one of these issues in the um, high end and deal with all of them. It's just not going to happen. But for loud party speakers, uh, these are great. They are not critical listening speakers. I'm sorry to say you are not going to be the end-all be-all, but you put these into a uh, room, play them loud for a party, they are perfect for that. Um, you want to put your Diane Bish on and really crank it and get the people dancing? This is the speaker for you. Okay, so our final rating for these speakers is a white sparkling Demisec. So, perfect speaker for a rockin' party. Hey, Mom, I'm gonna go out and pick up a couple of Airy Licks. You gotta hit me harder than that. Let's try that again. Okay. Hit me harder than that. Really? Yeah, you went too slow. You just back. Okay. Right? Just let me say it again. Chris? No Diane Bish for one week. Almost. You gotta take the soap out of my mouth first. Oh. Mom, I'm gonna go out and pick up a cup of Aerolix. No, no, you gotta wait for me to finish before oh. you hit me. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> wait for me to finish. <laughs> then okay, slap sorry, me. I got into it real good. You ready? Okay. No Diane Bish for one week. That's good. That's good. Mom, I'm going to go out and pick up a cup of air. You can't hit me before I finish the statement. <laughs> Let me finish the statement, then you can hit me. Okay. You ready? First, you got to stop laughing. <laughs> okay. Mom, I'm just going to go out and pick up a cup of Aerolix. Okay, when I finish saying Aerolix, you slap me. Okay. Okay, you ready? Hey, Mom, I'm going to go out and pick up a cup of Aerolix. <laughs> you can't laugh though. We gotta I'm get sorry, the whole video. I, oh no, okay. Okay, no laughing. No laughing. We have to do it again. You have to keep hitting me, Mom. <laughs>